Hello and welcome. So whenever we start working with the data, the first step is to start doing the exploratory data analysis. And there are certain crucial steps that are to be performed as a part of exploratory data analysis. Now, is there a way that this could be standardized and made easy so that we don't have to really struggle with our data at a later stage? This video is targeting to answer that question for you. We're going to use a very powerful tool that's known as Y Data Profiling. Earlier, this used to be known as the Pandas Profiling, and it comes quite handy when you're dealing with a data set and you want certain answers relative to the data right at the beginning. If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. So to begin with, we'll be taking up a very popular data set that's known as the bank marketing data set. It's a data set where a Portuguese bank has targeted its customers, basically for a term deposit, and it has many variants. This data set has been obtained from the famous UCI machine learning repository, and it's publicly available. So we'll provide you a link in the description where you can download this data from, and you can replicate these steps that we are doing. Now let's head on to Google Collaboratory, and you can see that uh, I've already pointed to the data sources that I'm going to be using for this exercise. So by default, this Y data profiling library is not available on Collab. You will have to install it using pip install. So that's what we are doing first. And this is a step that you'll have to follow. In my case, it's already showing that it's already satisfied and installed. You may have to run this code for your notebook separately. The next step is that we are importing some basic libraries like Pandas and of course, we are also importing profile report class from the Y data profiling package. Let's just run this. So once this is done, we will be reading the data set that we obtained from the UCI repository. UCI repository actually gives you a couple of variants of this data. We are using a specific one, which is bank-additional.csv, a smaller version of the data. And we are reading it as df underscore bank. That will be the name of the data frame. Now what you have to do is we have to use this specific class that we get from Y data profiling and we have to mention the name of the data frame and we can give a title to our report as well, which says, let's say bank data profile. And once this report is captured in order to read it separately, we are going to take an output in the HTML format. So that's what we are running. So this code will convert it to a report title, report underscore bank marketing dot HTML. And that's what we'll be studying further. So it might take some time, but when you see the output, you'll realize that it really worth the effort. So it has completed the export. Let's go back to the Google Collaboratory. You can see report bank marketing is available now. We can simply download it. So now that we can see this report is available, we can go through different sections of this. First of all, it gives us an overview of the data, which says data set with statistics. It says we have 21 variables and about 4,119 rows. We don't have any missing data. Had there been any missing data, it would have also pointed to the missing percentage. And how does it calculate it? It looks at the total number of missing cells divided by the number of cells, which will be the product of rows and columns in the data. It also checks the duplicate rows and duplicate row percentage compared to the overall rows, total size in the memory and average record size in the memory. It also gives you a breakup of the different types of variables. So it says we have 10 numeric variables, 10 categorical variables, and one Boolean variable. Now. It also has something here next to overview that you can see, which is called alerts. Let's see what does it flag to us. So it says there are a couple of features which indicate very high correlation. Imagine this is doing it all of this proactively for us. So it says this feature has high correlation with, let's say another feature called month, so on and so forth. The couple of the features which are correlated with each other. And even for the categorical variables, it calculates a correlation. So generally, for numerical variables, we'll talk about something that's known as Pearson's correlation. For categorical variables, there is something called as the Kramer's V. That's what it calculates. So you'll find even for the categorical features, it would have calculated correlation and would indicate something here. It also points out for the categorical variables if the data is imbalanced. For example, if you look at the column called default, it says it's highly imbalanced, 54.9%. If there's a feature called P outcome, that's again imbalanced. So we're not getting too much into the details of the features right now, because the idea of this video is to give you an understanding of all of this can be done for any data set. And next is you can scroll down or you can just navigate through this HTML report by clicking on these tabs. So let's say if I click on variables, that's the next section. We can choose variable level details. For example, we have a feature called age. And we can, let's say, choose any single variable if we want. Otherwise, it shows us details relative to all the variables one by one. Let's take one example, age. 
It says age is a real number variable. It's numerical in nature. It has 67 distinct values, unique values. Then it's talking about the percentage of distinct values compared to the overall data. It's talking about the proportion of missing values, missing percentage. Do we have any infinite entries and their proportion? What's the mean? What's the minimum, maximum? Do we have some zeros in that? What's the proportion of zeros? Do we have negative values? What's the proportion of negative values? So on and so forth. It also shows us a miniature histogram here that you can observe you, to get an idea about the range in which and how does this variable vary. You can also click on more details and that will further display uh, some additional information about this variable. So it gives you all the quantiles of the data like the 25th percentile, median, 75th percentile. In addition, it gives you the 5th percentile and 95th percentile IQR values. If you're familiar with the statistics, you know what all these values are. And a couple of other additional statistics like uh, the coefficient of variation, standard deviation, kurtosis, mean. You can interpret all these pieces of information for any numerical feature. You can click on other tabs. For example, it has histograms. So this is a closer look at the histogram that you just saw above in a miniature version. And you can click on the common values. So it kind of talks about what's the frequency of values. So let's say if you talk about the age of 32, it says there are 216 occurrences of that value. And that is 5.2% of all the values. Similarly, it has a section for extreme values. It shows you minimum 10 values and maximum 10 values and what's their proportion like. We can spend more time on this and uh, you get to know a lot about each feature. Likewise, let's take an example of a categorical feature. So we have a feature called job. It talks about the job role and it says it has 12 unique categories. 0.3% is the percentage of distinct values that we have, no missing value again. It kind of shows you the count plot as well. So it talks about top four or five categories and then it clubs the other values together here. No change to the data, it's just for display purposes. And you can click on more details again to understand this a little better. If you go to the tab called category, it will show you, let's say we have a category called admin related jobs. What proportion is it to the overall data? So it says it's 24.6% followed by blue collar. So you can imagine roughly about 45% people were doing these two kind of jobs. The remaining 10 values that we have, because we have total 12 values, uh, would add up to the remaining 55%, approximately 56%. All right, so we can likewise look at the interactions and interactions tries to show you a kind of visualization that you will get using some hexagonal scatter plots. Let's say you choose the variable called age and you choose the variable called duration. It tries to show you what's the relationship between these features. Please note that earlier we had many more options to visualize here. Now they have kind of limited the options, but it still gives you a rough idea about what these features are all about. And if you go to the next section, it talks about the correlations. So you get a proper table, which is like a heat map kind of a thing, which talks about how different features are correlated. Once again, please note, it draws correlations for all sort of features, not just for numerical features. For categorical features, it uses that Kramer's V. It kind of gives you a range of values that the correlation coefficients attain for all the features. And we can also go to the table view where it kind of gives you the raw values of the coefficients. If you're not able to just judge what the coefficient is by color, you can get the raw value of the coefficient. For example, we were checking age and let's say duration. So it says age and duration have a weak positive correlation. That's only 0 0.028. You can read all the values like this. Then it has a section called missing values. It kind of shows you the count of missing values. In our current data, we don't have a missing value. That's why it uh, is showing you all the data points as available. But had there been missing values, it would have subtracted those many values from the overall number of rows. It also tries to show a kind of matrix. So I'll show you for a different data set that it actually points out the missing values quite clearly. And if you want to look at first few and last few rows of the data, it tells you about the first 10 rows and the last 10 rows of the data, just in case you want to glance through it. So you see that it comes very handy. It kind of gives you a template-based output. If let's say you have a team or you have different people, at least you'll be sure that they have seen the same output while working on the data. Otherwise, if you give it to different individuals, they may come up with their own observations, depending on how many steps they have tried. 